In video number seven, we're now going to look at how we can do some rounding on different numbers and also talk about a few, not all of them, but a few important functions we can apply to text. We'll also talk about how you can manage dates and times later as well. Let's first of all talk about rounding because it's relatively straightforward. And also because I've got no data here, I can show you another useful function, which is the random function. So if you're wanting to generate a random number, you can use the random function or just rand as it is in Excel. So rand, do some brackets. Now for rand, nothing goes inside the brackets. It doesn't take any arguments. And I clicked away and it evaluated and created a random number. So this random number is between zero and one. If I create a few more of these using my fill handle, you can see again, they stick to the range zero to one. We get quite a few decimal places as well. This is great if you're wanting random numbers, but the issue is unless you are hoping they're going to be within zero and one, these numbers are not in the range you can use. So let's say just for our example, we're looking for, uh, I don't know, the time taken to run a 5K because I did one this morning. I won't say my time, but we can randomly generate ones between, I imagine, well, the world record is, I believe, 12 minutes, something up until, I don't know, maybe 40 minutes if you are walking a period of the 5K, maybe 45, yeah, let's say 45. So if I want to transform these into a, of a range I want to, or just recalculate them, I can do at rate equals round again, because we still need that generator for seed, if it generates random numbers. And now I multiply this by the upper range, which I said was 45, minus the lower range, which I said was 12. We do this in brackets, so we get the result here, and then we add on the lower range at the bottom. And this transforms the number between zero and one up into the range we want. And so now I press enter and we get a new random number in the range. And if I generate more, they are all within our range. One thing which can be a tiny bit annoying with random numbers is because Excel wants to recalculate quite often and because by definition, you're getting a different answer each time. Once you recalculate one cell, it will change all of the other ones, which you know is not always ideal. So if you want to keep your random numbers fixed, what you can do is copy them. So right click, copy, and then somewhere else, paste them again. And make sure if you right click paste, you've got a few options here. Best to go to and paste in the values. You can see the values match up. I paste them in. Uh, once I do that, you get new calculations over here, so they look like they don't match, but actually these were the values from before. And now I can delete these if I want to. I'll just delete all of this, and shift cells left is perfect, and now I can add in my heading again. Okay, so having such specific random numbers might be useful in some cases, but actually I don't need all of these decimal places because it doesn't really make sense to be measuring minutes with such precision. So if I want to reduce these, I can do some rounding. So our basic round function, if I go equals round, and if we have a look at the prompt here, we get two arguments. We first of all have our number, then a comma, then how many digits we want. So let's first of all use our number here. Let's do a relative reference, do a comma, and let's do two digits here and close this off. We're gonna get 21.82, because really that two digits refers to two decimal places. And we can see we've got .81, then 819, and because it's nine, it rounds up to 82. If I wanted to change this, I can change this to uh, one decimal place. Let's have a look what happens here. So we should get to 21.8. Let's have a look. We do, lovely. If I change this number of digits to zero, we don't get no digits, we get no decimal places. It'll just round to an integer. So 21.8 rounds to 22, which makes sense. I can also round sort of the left-hand side as well by going to minus digits, which doesn't make sense in maths, but does in uh, Excel at least. So this should go to 20 because it gets rid of that one. It rounds it down in this case. So a few different things we can do around this. Take this back to uh, two and autofill for the rest. So that's round. We also have round down. So if you're wanting to only round down and not round up or down depending on where it falls, right? Because uh, round works by rounding down if it's less than 0.5 and up if it's equal to or above 0.5. But if you want it just to round down, which you may do in certain situations, where you can use the round down function. So round down, from the round down only, 
that is just round down, it's fairly straightforward. Same idea as um, with just round, we have our number and then how many decimal, how many digits we want, but this kind is always gonna round down. So let's have a look at this, let's do two again and just compare between our two columns here. Okay, let's just have a look at this row as an example. So we've got 42.409 which with round goes to 42.41 because it's rounding up, because we have the nine. But here we're rounding it down, so it forces it to 42.4, and we have that zero as well. It's just left it off because it doesn't matter. And as you would expect, rounding up works in exactly the same fashion, so I won't talk too much about it, um, but we can also just compare as we go down. So here, you know, on our first row, 21.819 should, uh, well, when we move around down, it, it goes down, but when it goes up, it goes to 0.82. Anyway, that's fairly straightforward. There are one other one which is not used a ton, but I think is quite interesting, is where we are doing, we're rounding based on a multiple. So a multiple rounding based on a multiple. So let's have a look at this in action. Uh, this one is shortened to M round. So we do M round. Again, two arguments. We have our number. Our second one is, let's just make sure I've got my original number over here. We've got what multiple we want it to round to. So maybe we want this to round to a multiple of five. I'm not quite sure why, but just an example. Press enter. And now this goes down to the nearest multiple, which 21, the nearest multiple of five is 20. If we just follow this down, we'll see other answers. So it just rounds it to the nearest multiple here. So 38 is closer to 40 than it is to 35. Hence why the answer here is 40, not 35. Okay, that is our first thing I wanted to look at. Now on a completely different theme, let's talk about various string operations we can do. So the simplest is what we call concatenation, concatenation. And by the way, a string is another word for text, right? So a string is the same as our text data type, concatenation. And this is where we are putting two words together. So for example, if I have, let's use Bill and Gates, if I want to, in my fourth column, adding them together so it's Bill and Gates in the same um, the same cell, I can use the concatenation function. So if I, there's actually two ways of doing this. I can use like an operator, so I can click Bill, and then use the ampersand, so the and symbol usually, and then I click my other cell. And if I press enter, we'll see we get Bill and Gates put together. So it literally puts the words right together, puts the strings together. The issue is I'm missing a space here. If I really want a space, what I can do is, well, let's see, if I add a space after my ampersand and put another ampersand, and let's see what happens, so I press enter because in my head, I've got a space here, it should work, but we have an issue because it uh, does not work like that because it needs to have quotes around it. So strings usually, or text usually has a quote around it. It's what distinguishes it from some other part of our formula. So I put a quotes around it, I still have that, that empty, that space within our quotes. Press enter and now we get the space once I put them together. So really we're doing two concatenation operations in the same line. We don't have to use the ampersand, we can also use an actual function called um, concatenate, which has got a little warning next to it because actually this is the older function. The concat function is what we should be using, uh, is the newer version, so concat, I have, first of all, I can click Bill and do a comma. And now I can click Gates, like that, C5, close this again. It's gonna squeeze them both together. If I want a space, I can go up to my formula and after my first comma, again, add in some quotes for a string, put a space and it will work like that if I add in a second comma. So there's a good way of combining often names but any bit of text together. And a very, very similar function to concatenate or concat is text join. So text join does what it says on the tin, except we have a few more arguments this time. You can see we don't just have our values, we have also a delimiter and ignore empty text, or ignore empty, sorry. So the delimiter is what separates, what, what separates our two values in this case. So before we were using space as a delimiter, but we had to put it in ourselves. Here I can specify, so if I do again in quotes, I put in a space here as my delimiter, do a comma, for our second argument. Ignore empty has to be true or false. Do, do we want to ignore the empty cells? I'll try and demonstrate this in a second. Let's just do false for the time being. And do another comma, and now I can specify what I want to join. Again, separately like that. Press enter, and we get Bill Gates with our delimiter 
as our empty, or not empty, with our space. Again, I can auto fill this and it works for Steve Jobs as well. Say I wanted to put in their middle names. I know Bill Gates' middle name is Henry because I just looked it up. I'm sure Steve Jobs has one too, but we can ignore that uh, because I want to demonstrate this second argument here about ignoring empty. So say I want to edit this so I have all three of these. So I need to add in uh, C5 as well here for his middle name. And now press enter, that should work fairly normally. Now if I just redo this, we get Steve Jobs and we get a little bit of a weird middle bit here. We get a double space because nothing is in this cell and so it's taking that to be uh, a space on its own. So if I change the formula back here to from false to true, it has to be a Boolean value. And um, now we want to ignore the empty cells. If I now drag this over, it should format a bit nicer. So it does, it doesn't, it ignores this empty cell. It's not trying to add in a space. And so it looks a bit funny with two spaces. So that could be quite useful if you've got some gaps in your table. There are loads of different string functions. Let's just show you a couple more. Let's say we've got maybe some names typed in a little bit lazily maybe. Um, and you want to make it a bit more consistent. Let's just widen the D column. Um, I can use a function to make it all capitals maybe. So if I wrap this in a function called upper and make sure all of this is inside the upper function by adding a bracket to the end of this, press enter. Now it's going to convert whatever was inside, which was Bill Henry Gates, to uppercase only. And now if I drag this down, it means it sort of fixes any issues with dodgy input. I can also, if I don't want it in capitals, it seems like we're shouting, I can change it to proper. So what proper does is capitalizes the first letter in each word, like a name would usually be, and makes all the rest of it lowercase. Again, this should fix any issues of how I inputted the data. Another useful thing to be able to do is deal with dates and also times. So date time is often packaged as a data type in of itself because we obviously have dates in a very specific format. How we format it in the UK is different to how it's formatted in America. And sometimes we'll need the full date, sometimes we'll need just the shorthand versions and so on. So there are different data types to manage this. If you want to have what we call a timestamp, a timestamp is what tells us the exact time and date. You can use the now function, which takes no arguments because it's giving us data, we're not giving it any data, press enter, and it calculates the exact date and the exact time, which I can verify is accurate. I can change this to, if I want just for longer date, like 1st of May, I can change it like that at the top with my data types. Uh, that's quite useful. If I want to set a specific date myself and not just for current date, what I can do is use the date format like this, as you might be able to hear a load of wind in the background. Apologies. So we take three arguments to the date function, year, month, and day. So in that order. So first of all, if I do say 2020, and then do the month, which isn't text here, I can't write May, I would have to write five, like this, five, and then the day today is the first. So same result, but um, you know, you might wanna format it if you are putting in entries from various different days. And say we've got, because um, often you are importing data from various different sources, often they'll have the data or the date in a format which isn't what you want it to be. So what you can do, say we've got a, a dodgy format like 2020, we might then have, I don't know, uh, a space which is 01 and then a space and then 05, like this, and we want to somehow convert this into a date. We can use a few more string functions for this. So um, maybe we've got, so we're trying to get, first of all, it's trying to isolate 2020 here, so the first four characters. I can use a function called left to do this. This takes two arguments, our text, which is this cell, and how many characters we want, but it starts counting from the left, as the name suggests. So if I want the first four characters, I'll put in four, press enter, and we should get just 2020 like that. Perfect. Now I want the middle two. In fact, let's leave the one for the second and go to five. So the last two characters I want for this one, or the last one character, doesn't really matter, let's do the last one character. Um, I will do right instead because I want to start counting from the right hand side. So again, use this cell as text, do a comma, and then put a one like this, and press enter, and we just get the five. Now to get for zero one, let's do zero one, not just one, it's a little bit trickier because we can't count from either the left or right because we're going to include data we don't actually want. So instead we use the mid function. This is a very similar idea except we have three arguments this time. We also have 
well, we have to specify where we're starting counting from and then how many characters we want. So again, same bit of text, then do a comma. So I want to start here at what, four, five, because we have a space. I want to start at six, and I want to go on for just two characters, zero and one. So let's have a look what happens here. We get zero, one, perfect. And then we can take these values in our uh, date function. You could you don't have to separate them in different cells, we could just do it all in one, uh, but then we can use this and convert this to the same date format from this raw data. For this try now, to make sure you can do the stuff I have talked about, I'd recommend you do the following steps. So actually get Excel open and follow these four steps. Essentially generating some random data, random numeric data, and also I want you to add in some fake names. Don't bother writing loads of fake names, just add one and then copy it down. The practice be able to combine various different columns in one nice display by concatenating the different bits of data. So have a go, there'll be a solution in the description as well.